Hello and welcome back to The Note. I've been warned against using too many animal photos, but today it's absolutely justified because my guest is, has become almost synonymous with the concept of a black swan. Extremely unlikely, but extreme events for which we have no precedents. They're called black swans because Europeans, before they arrived in Australia, had every reason to believe that no swans could possibly be black. Plainly, when it happened, they were very, very surprised. Now, my guest is Nassim Nicholas Taleb, author of The Black Swan and one of the world's most famous thinkers about uncertainty in markets. I started by asking him whether we were any less prone to black swan events than we were five years ago when Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. The system is more fragile than it was before. Uh, simply because natural systems uh, improve by breaking things that don't work. And, and what we've done mm. is broke things that work. But uh, in the case of Lehman Brothers, that was an example of somebody attempting to make a stand against moral hazard and allowing a bank to go down. Why has that ultimately not succeeded in reducing the fragility of the system, as you see? No, I mean, but we, uh, uh, Lehman Brothers happened... Uh, too late. We should have, uh, you know, we started uh, encouraging moral hazard and letting fragile institutions survive in uh, 1983. You remember, we had uh, nationalization of Continental Illinois, we had rescues, uh, continuous rescues, and then we had policy aiming at making it easy for financial institutions mm. to survive, uh, you know, rather than stand on their own legs. Uh, the problem is since uh, Lehman Brothers, we didn't understand the properties of the system that a healthy system like California is a system that can allow for, f for fluctuations and improve from uh, error hmm. rather than a system that uh, you know, uh, socializes errors. And in fact, uh, what we have is a unique situation where people who did the right thing have been punished and penalized. And right. people who did the wrong thing uh, uh, you know, are thriving. There's a big wedge between what's going on and the perception of what's going on particularly because we have too many bureaucrats in power. Right. And we have more bureaucrats in power than before, uh, more complexity uh, rather than simplicity. Um, I, I testified in front of that Obama commission, and not a word of what I said was there. And, and, and my problem was at two levels. The first one, a system that depends mm -hmm. on tail events, on these, uh, you know, uh, rare uh, consequential events. Black swans, yes. Black swans. Ex extreme events yeah, with exactly. low probability. Yeah. With low probability that you don't see comes a system that's very vulnerable to these, okay, increasingly vulnerable to these, and, and with a lot of what I call Taylor risk, huge accumulation of that, coupled with no skin, absence of skin in the game, no you know, uh, harm for doing these strategies right. because they explode, you're gone after they explode and you've cashed your bonus. So, and that yep. combination is still there. Now, how do you put skin back in the game? Now, for example, investment banks were at one point partnerships. Now they're, they're quoted, so we haven't moved back on, on that system. Securitization in certain products has disappeared, but in uh, others such as mortgages, there's as much securitization as ever, which ultimately leaves people without skin in the game. How can you reintroduce that element, make, get people to take risks on their own behalf? Uh, well, I mean, the hedge fund, moving into a hedge fund, is putting skin in the game because mm. the risk takers are harmed by their mistakes. So we have had a move towards hedge funds, some class of risk cannot be taken by banks. Right, and, so in and in sense, interestingly, one of the dogs that didn't bark back in 2008 was that there wasn't a really big systemic hedge fund failure. Exactly, because they're diversified and, and they fail all the time. So, yeah. so it's not 2008 that would make them fail, unlike the banks. Mm -hmm. But it's not just that. It's not, that. it's not that it makes them more careful. It makes them uh, uh, vulnerable to exiting the gene pool. Right. When I drive uh, you know, my car on a highway, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable because the other drivers are, you know, have skin in the game. But also because, because of skin in the game, a lot of people have exited the gene pool because right. of their, their bad drivers. So this is sort of like what, how you like the economy to work. And, and here what we have is the opposite. We have much, many more bureaucrats calling mm. the shots. And bureaucrats don't have skin in the game. This is why I'm in favor of decentralization, for example. Right. It multiplies the mistakes, and people are harmed because they live in the environment where the mistake, you know, that's a, you know, where they make the mistake and they're hard, they live with it. Now, is there any sense in which the uh, Darwinian process you seem to be talking about might actually be happening? I mean, hedge funds are taking on a lot of the roles that investment banks have taken. You know, banks are steadily being disintermediated. Is there some sense that we are slowly moving towards a, a system yes. that might be healthy? No, because, because if you look at... Uh, 
before the crisis to after the crisis. Yeah. We had uh, uh, the sectors that were the government and meddled with are doing very well. The corporate sector is doing phenomenally well. Yeah. But if you look at pre-crisis, uh, we had less government debt. Today we have more government debt. And the most dangerous, most fragilizer of all is government debt, particularly when it's at the federal level. Um, at a local level, that sort of you know, uh, washes out and, and people are more responsible with it. And of course, cities, debt, cities are easier to, to exactly. manage and one bankruptcy won't destroy the, destroy the world. It won't destroy the system, it teaches other cities and they're more responsible fiscally. And uh, I mean, it makes them, for the, the environment, makes, some people are responsible, but we've got to take all cities. And, uh, and the other thing is corporation having uh, debt, corporation mm. are more responsible in a sense, and, and their debt turns into equity. <laughs> Right. See. So what, the most dangerous of all, the most fragilized of fragilizers is government debt. And we've been taking on government debt of, you know, uh, there's no tomorrow. And the other problem um, is ethical, right. is that you cannot harm future generations or you cannot harm retirees. P who paid the price? We had that scam called quantitative easing. And it's in fact, the median income has been dropping in America. Yeah, and it's ratcheted up inequality that much. Exactly, further. and and the 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 one percent of the one percent has been taken on most of the wealth, and you can see it. Inflation of assets hasn't worked very well. So at some point, they got to realize that not only they're increasing instability. I mean, they're they're, they're fragilizing the system, but it's also not very ethical. Click back later for the second part of my interview with Nassim Nicholas Taleb.